Hello uh, and welcome to Standard 8 of the Care Certificate Workbooks. My name is Daniel Dutton and I run the website dsdweb.co.uk which provides free help, guidance and support for people that are studying for care qualifications. In this video we will be looking at Standard 8 Fluids and Nutrition. This short standard focuses on the importance of healthy eating and eating and hydration and how to recognize signs of malnutrition and dehydration. It also touches on elements of food safety and hygiene. For further information about this standard visit DSD web by clicking the link in the description. You should not simply copy the information in this video but use it as a guide to write answers in your own words. Before continuing, I'd be very grateful if you could click the thumbs up button to like this video and subscribe to my channel. This helps to promote the channel on YouTube and makes it easier for others to find it. Thank you. The first question asks you to list the four basic principles of food safety, or as they are commonly known, the four C's. They are cleaning, chilling, cooking and cross-contamination. Cleaning refers to making sure your hands, work surfaces and utensils are cleaned thoroughly before food preparation begins. In addition, you should keep the environment clean and tidy throughout the food preparation process. Chilling refers to ensuring that certain foods are chilled properly to slow down the reproduction of bacteria and keep it safe to consume. The food packaging will indicate if it needs to be refrigerated and they should be kept at temperatures below 5 degrees Celsius. Cooking certain items of food properly, particularly meat and fish, makes them safe to consume. A rule of thumb is that a temperature of 75 degrees Celsius at the centre of the food will ensure that all harmful bacteria is destroyed. Finally, cross-contamination refers to ensuring that different types of food are stored and prepared separately to prevent the bacteria from one food spreading onto another. In addition, surfaces and utensils should be cleaned thoroughly before coming into contact with different foods. The next question asks why food safety and hygiene is important when preparing and handling food. This is because it prevents the spread of pathogens that can cause illness, such as food poisoning. Carers often work with individuals that are particularly susceptible to illness, so it is especially important good infection and control practices are followed. In addition, it is a legal and regulatory requirement under the Food Safety Act 1990 and Care Quality Commission regulations that food provided to individuals must be stored handled, prepared and delivered correctly and that anyone that does this as part of their role has sufficient training. Part 2 of Activity 8.1b asks you to explain the importance of nutrition and hydration in maintaining health and well-being. To function properly, our bodies need fluids and the right balance of nutrients. Deficiencies can lead to illness. The Eat Well Plate or Eat Well Guide can be used to understand the correct proportions of each type of food we should be eating. It divides food up into groups of fruit and veg for vit vitamins and minerals, bread, pasta, rice and other starchy carbohydrates, meat, fish, eggs, beans and other high protein foods, milk, cheese, yogurt and other dairy products, and finally, oils and spreads. Fluids are needed for several of the body's systems to function correctly, including digestion, excretion, blood circulation and perspiration. The next activity asks two questions. Firstly, what is the recommended daily amount of fluid an individual must consume to support good hydration? The NHS currently recommends 1.2 litres a day. Secondly, 
how many 150 milliliter glasses would an individual have to consume to reach the minimum recommended amount? If you know the answer to the first question, then you can calculate the answer to the second. 1.2 litres is 1,200 millilitres, so 1,200 divided by 150 is 8. So the answer is 8 150 millilitre glasses per day. The Eat Well Guide currently recommends 6 to 8 glasses of fluid per day. As well as water, this can also include low-fat milk, tea, coffee and sugar-free drinks. Fruit juices should be limited to 150 millilitres per day. We also ingest a small amount of water with food and obviously in higher temperatures we will need more fluids. Part 1 of activity 8.1c asks you to list six signs or symptoms of malnutrition. These can include tiredness, fatigue and low energy, susceptibility to infections, increases or decreases in weight, behaviour changes including depression, constipation, dizziness and falls, muscle weakness and impaired wound healing. Part 2 of this activity asks for six signs or symptoms of dehydration. These can include dry and cracked lips, dark coloured urine, thirst, headaches, tiredness, fatigue and low energy, dizziness and confusion, infections, particularly water infections, kidney stones and constipation. The final activity describes three individuals and asks how, would you, how you would promote adequate nutrition and hydration to them. The first individual has weakened muscles from a recent stroke. Recovery from a stroke will require several professionals from nurses to speech and language therapists so it is important that advice from these people is recorded in the individual's care plan and followed. They may need assistance with food preparation and feeding. They may, they may even require food, food uh, tube feeding or food may need to be cut up into smallest pieces to aid swallowing. Promoting changes in lifestyle including following a healthy meal plan is required to reduce the likelihood of another stroke. A low fat, high fibre diet with limited salt intake may be necessary. The second individual has dementia and sometimes forgets to eat or drink. You could support them to eat and drink healthily by reminding them when meal times are. If you are not with them all the time, you could encourage the use of notes, log books or alarms that remind them when to eat. The third individual has a visual impairment and requires assistance to maintain independence when preparing food, eating and drinking. As with all these individuals, you would work with them in line with their care plan. This individual may require voice direction or gentle touch to cook, eat and drink. You may need to help them with some tasks, but they should be encouraged to do as much as they can for themselves to promote independence. Good lighting, colour and contrast can aid visibility for cupboards, work surfaces and utensils. Tactile or braille labels and even talking equipment may also be useful. And that's it for Standard 8. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this video useful. If you require any additional help or want to send feedback about this video, please feel free to use the comment section below or visit my website dsdweb.co.uk. The link in the description will take you to more detailed information for this standard. And if you've not already done so, please click the like and subscribe buttons below. Until next time, goodbye.